Hi, I'm Lawrence Cornfield. Welcome to Building San Francisco. We're doing a special series, Stay Safe, exploring how you can stay in your home safely and comfortably after an earthquake. Let's look at some common earthquake myths. We're here at the Spur Urban Center on Mission Street in San Francisco. We have two guests, actually three guests today. Um, we have David Bonowitz, a structural engineer, Pat Buskovich, a structural engineer, and Harvey the Wonder Dog, who's often with us on Building San Francisco. Um, I wanted to talk about urban myths, plenty of myths. Harvey, Harvey, what do you think about earthquakes? Can you tell if they're coming in advance? He's sleeping during those earthquakes. Have you ever noticed him take any special uh, No, no. Advance? If anything, we've had earthquakes at night, and he sleeps right through them. So there is no truth that I'm aware of, particularly with Harvey, uh, that the uh, dog is aware of an impending earthquake. Have you heard anything about that, David? Well, you hear the myth all the time. Right. But uh, suppose your dog does get up. Is that, is that going to help you do something? I've heard that animals may be more sensitive to the very small vibrations that begin an earthquake. Who knows? But yes, I've also read extensively that actually animals cannot predict earthquakes. So I think we should say that is definitely a myth. Yes. At least that's my take anyway. OK, let's see. Another. How about earthquake weather? Today is a spectacular day in San Francisco. Something that sometimes people would say, this is earthquake weather. It's still and it's warm. Is this earthquake weather? No, no not such, that I've heard of. No such thing. There's no connection between no the weather. Thing. We're talking about the weather, which is on a, a daily or weekly cycle, and earthquakes, which are on the cycle of hundreds of years. There's no relationship. Yeah, and I've heard it's hot weather, and I've heard it's cold weather, and I've heard it's rain. So I'm not even sure what weather is the myth. How about morning or evening? People say sometimes time of day is, uh, impacts earthquakes. Yeah, it happens whenever it's least convenient. <laughs> <laughs> right, if it's cold and raining. Yes. <laughs> uh, honestly, when it, when it happens and everybody lives, people say we were lucky, and when it happens and they, they don't, they say, that, well, it was terrible timing. I, look, it's, it's never a good time for an earthquake. But we're going to have one. We are going to have one. How about the ground opening up and swallowing people in cars? Is that something that's likely to I happen? Like in that, like in that TV Su movie? Superman. Yeah. Yeah. yeah when well, Lois Lane collapsed into uh, the earth with her car. Right. Yeah. No. I, you could have some fissures forming, but not like the TV shows. No, they don't, they don't swallow you up whole. But the earth does move, and it sometimes uh, bumps up, and you get ground uh, fracture, very, very rare, and of course it's not the kind of thing that opens you up and sucks you into Hades. Right. <laughs> or anywhere. No, or anywhere, <laughs> thank you. Um, is California falling into the ocean, the next big earthquake, or are we just going to like fall off and get all wet? In here? I hope so, because I've got property in the valley. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not going anywhere. We're staying put. Uh, we will have a lot of damage, but the, the storylines that California will disappear in the ocean and Arizona will become beachfront property is not real. What's actually happening is that the coastal part of California is moving, the southern part of California is moving north so that it's not falling off, it's coming up from the south to the north, mm -hmm. the but, west, but the you, west side of the fault. You'd have to be able to invest over the million year cycle, mm -hmm. not weeks or years, but millions of years. But maybe a million years from now, part of LA will be up in the Bay Area. For better or worse. Yes. <laughs> okay, here's a really tough question, actually, that people say all the time. Those other know. ones weren't tough? This, those were easy. This is a real challenge. Do the smaller earthquakes relieve stress on a fault so that the larger earthquake will be less strong or they'll be less frequent? Theoretically, yes, but the amount, of, the amount of energy that's released in each small earthquake that does no damage is so small, you need many, many of those to, to add so up. So effectively to, not Effectively not enough to change what's actually going to happen in the big one we're expecting. Yes, I think you would probably have to have maybe hundreds of magnitude 4 earthquake to equal 1.7. Probably so, and how many fours more. have we had? So it, it, it doesn't do any appreciable reduction in the amount of energy it needs to be released. So small earthquakes are not making, making our lives better in the future. Not, just... not in any way you can count on. Okay. Yes. Um, I have heard that the Transamerica building and other buildings in San Francisco are on rollers and they're all isolated. Is that true? One of my favorite myths. For the Transamerica pyramid, not true. It's a conventional foundation like almost all the buildings in San Francisco, there are a few newer buildings that have what's called base isolation, but the Transamerica Pyramid is not one of those. 
You know, Transamerica was built way before the technology came out from base isolation, so it's a pretty conventional foundation design. I have heard about this thing called the triangle of life, and you're supposed to like roll into this edge next to your bed or something to save yourself. Is there, is there anything to value in that? Yes, but it's not the, the recommended approach. If you're awake and in your room, that's not what you should do. You should d drop, cover, and hold on to something. If you're at school, same thing. If you're in your kitchen, same thing. If you happen to be in bed and you roll over next to your bed, not a bad place to be. Better to be under it, though. But the conventional wisdom is drop, cover, hold on. And I agree with that. Yeah, the, the reality is that when we have a major earthquake, the ground shaking is going to be so pronounced that you're not going to be able to get up and go anywhere. You're going to be pretty much going to be staying where you are when that earthquake hits, because it will be very pronounced shaking. You're not going to be able to stand up and outrun gravity. But you want to get under something, so the things that might fall. Are not yes, a door frame or something, but you're not going to be moving great distances. Okay. Where can I buy a Richter scale, Pat? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Charles. Hardware, right? Charles <laughs> is selling them. Mr. Richter is selling them. Yeah, cold, cold hardware. We're going to put a plug in for cold hardware. They sell them. No, uh, they're not available. Uh, it's a rather complex. Um, in fact, we didn't, frankly, we don't even use the Richter scale anymore. Honestly. Yeah. We, we use something called moment magnitude. It works on the same kind of scale, but that's, uh, that was an early uh, um, technology that we don't really use anymore. So probably the myth that I hear most often is, my building is just fine in the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake, so I'm, everything's just fine. Is that true? No, the Loma Prieta earthquake was a significant earthquake in Santa Cruz due to attenuation, or the distance we, San Francisco is away from Santa Cruz, the ground accelerations here was quite moderate, and the duration was very moderate. So anyone who believes that they survived a big earthquake, and Lumber Prairie is a big earthquake, and their building has been tested, is sadly mistaken. Now, what we're planning for is the bigger earthquake closer to San Francisco, maybe even the big earthquake on the Hayward Fault, totally independent. Much stronger than the uh, Loma Prieta earthquake. Yeah. In San Francisco, it will feel much stronger than we felt here due to 1989. So people who were here in 89, they should say three times as strong in terms of the shaking and twice as long. And that will give them more of an indication of the earthquake that we think will occur in our lifetime. Not the great earthquake, the probable earthquake. Three times the size of Loma Prieta. And one of the important facts is there's a threshold of damage and at 10% isn't really the threshold of damage. So when you triple it, you're across that line. It's dramatically more damage in the next big earthquake. I want to thank you. Thank you, Harvey. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, David, for joining us. And thank you for joining us, and stay safe.